hope on the tightrope. It was James Baldwin that said, nothing or not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. On the first thing that I see with this particular miracle, the fact that I see it jumps right off the page. It is a dire illness, a dire illness, yes, yes. dire illness. Oh, look at this word, dire. It's extremely serious or urgent. There's some urgent things. There's some fearful things. There's some appalling things. There's some awful things. There's some dreadful things. There's some frightful things. There's some horrible things that's going on in our world. Sandwich between this pandemic. And our own personal issues. Now we have this virus called racism. Because these have already been issued. These have already been things. This is a dire illness. But even in the face. And this is what I need you to get people of God. Even in the face of dire illness. Even in the face of what America looks like today. Even in the face of all this violence. Even in the face of all this murdering. Even in the face of all this racial tension. Can I tell you that God is setting us up to display of intentional glory. Yes sir. Oh how do we know him to be Jehovah Shalom. To be our peace Gideon needed some peace Gideon needed some help and God said I am Jehovah Shalom all I'm trying to tell you is people of God when we have a dire illness when we're dealing with things that's right in front of our face and things right in our home right in our city right in our nation oh this sounds like a job for God this sounds like a job for God to be able to step up and to be who it is that he is oh I know he tests our face with deliberate idle silence God said that I'm going to call some deliberate idle silence in your life. Here it is right here. Look at verse number five. The Bible said now Jesus loved Martha. He loved Martha. He loves his sister and Lazarus. Jesus loved these three. Jesus loved them. He loved them. The John tells us again and again and again that he loves them. And this is what's so strange about Jesus idle silence because he loves these individuals. He knows these individuals. Oh, come on he's lived with these individuals spent the night at their home and now when they need him oh he's idle now when they need him he's silent but they, they assume listen to me good I told you earlier that they didn't necessarily ask Jesus to come they just told him what was going on they assume because of his ability that he would do it they assume because of their relationship that he wanted to do it stuck in their feeling because disappointment birthed through inaccurate expectations so many individuals have disappointment in their life because they have inaccurate expectations the Lord never told us that we were going to live a life without any pain. The Lord never told us that we were going to live a life just holding hands with everyone saying kumbaya my Lord. My Lord the Lord never told us that we are going to live in this world and not experience being, being betrayed and experience being racially profiled and experience being put down and ostracized. He never told us don't have no inaccurate expectations of the Lord but what our expectation ought to be is to be to God no matter no matter what it is we go through though he slay me yet will I trust in him my expectation is this that through my pain through whatever it is I'm going through God is able to deliver and what I hope to see in us all I see Jesus being disgusted by indifference and when you when you press further into the Greek and see him being greatly moved look what it means it means to be severely angry it literally means to snort like a horse. It literally, that's how mad he was. It literally means to be deeply and painfully moved. Then, then to express indignation against one. Hence to admonish urgently or to rebuke. Why, why, why is Jesus disgusted by their indifference? Why, I, why do I believe that Jesus is so angry? Why do I believe he's so upset? Oh, because Jesus has showed them for three and a half years. He turned water into wine. For three and a half years, he's fed 5,000 people with two feet sandwiches and loaves of bread oh for three and a half years I just told you about seven other miracles that he did they seen his resurrection power they seen his healing they've heard his teaching and you mean to tell me you're gonna let a little bit of trouble cause you to throw away everything you know about me oh.